morning everybody welcome back to the channel so today i apologize it's very windy outside so i haven't taken any video but i have taken a series of pictures as i walk around so the i was out with my father the other day and we were looking at some october sown uh, winter wheat following sheep graze mustard we had some additional fields next door that were spring uh, drilled and had better establishment and we were trying to make a comparison between uh, spring establishment and late October drilled sort of flexi wheat establishment and actually what I realized was that I had a very good example here on the chalk so I'm going to walk you through the example and uh, show you the different uh, growth characteristics and let you form your own opinion. So uh, that's what we're up to today. Right, so here we are on top of the hill. So this field here, the one I'm standing in, this is sheep grazed and mustard planted on the 14th of November. The field behind was also planted on the 14th of November, but not sheep grazed. The field to the left was planted on the 1st of January, but was sheep grazed. And finally, the field right at the back was sheep grazed, but planted on the 5th of March. The sheep grazed November planting looks sporadic but well tillered. In fact, the plants had the most tillers of any samples at seven per plant. The November drilled ungrazed looked probably the thickest and the average three tillers per plant. The January planted looked a second best still managed three tillers per plant and looks fit and strong and the March crop it's too early to tell uh, somewhat behind and hasn't started tillering yet it's probably worth at this point also just stopping to revisit why I believe that animal grazing is so important Fundamentally, it would be a lot easier for us just to grow the cover crop and then drill straight into it. But uh, revisiting how soil was originally created, of course, the best example is Great Plains roving herds of uh, buffalo and basically high impact short uh, term grazing. They graze, they poop, they wee, they move on. And also there's a lot of research at the moment showing that saliva, uh, urine, uh, poo, all helps encourage biome within the soil. In fact, the formation of vegetable mould through the action of worms was Charles Darwin's last published book in 1881. Darwin calculated that earthworms made topsoil at a rate of one inch per century. Now this rate was confirmed by Dr. David Montgomery in his book Soil, when he quoted the USDA that soil renewal rate was 0.2 millimeters a year, which equates to about three quarters of an inch every century. Um, he also stated that the USDA has determined the maximum soil loss should never exceed two millimeters a year, which roughly equates to losing topsoil at 10 times the rate that it can be made. Hence why we refer to this as regenerative agriculture, because the aim is to try and build topsoil at a faster rate than it is used up. Gabe Brown, and Dr. Alan Williams from the Soil Health Academy both believe high impact rotational grazing is essential for the building of soil health and soil carbon. And this really is the reason for my continued interest in introducing livestock back into an arable system. Fundamentally, they are cheaper to run than a muck spreader on wheels. So anyway, uh, that's it for this week. Thank you very much. See you soon.